this is going to be a tutorial on what I do with layering as a concept. I'm not really going to go into the specifics of how I create each sound, but I want to get you guys thinking about if you want to create an interesting, complex sound that requires layering, how you might approach it. So this is a pad sound that I created from my Undertale remix, and I'll show you what that sounds like right now. Right, so it's a huge layered sound. There are actually eight different, eight, yeah, eight different instances of instruments that we have in our sound. So I'm gonna go through each one and explain to you why I chose these sounds. But first, I wanna talk about a thing. Uh, whenever, we'll, whenever I approach layering, I like to think about frequency. And so I like to divide my sounds up and all my instruments based on what their root frequency is and what it should focus on. So let's start breaking down like this. So I have my bass sounds here. Here's the pluck sound. And so I picked that sound because I wanted the bass to have some sort of hit to it, just some sort of nice attack transient that just kind of cuts through a little bit. And I layer that with this resound with, uh, it's around like 100 to 125 in terms of my root frequency. And I have this to kind of give a little growl and also just fill up in the meteor end. So when I combine them, hold on a sec. You probably couldn't really hear the pluck bass in that, but you can feel it. And that's to me way more important. Often I find that when you feel the, subtles, uh, the subtle texture of a sound, it's much more efficient in the long run at least so i have the bass then i go into i'll jump a little bit ahead i'm gonna go into my mids so this is what my mids sound like this is a very basic basic uh patch i'll just if you're curious how i made it it's basically this it's just saw patch detuned and unisoned in here you can create this in any synth imaginable this is not the serum alone um, and my mids, or higher mids, probably around the 500 to 800 range. This is what this sounds like. So I put both of them together. So those are the two primary sounds that really give it its uh, main sound. When you hear the full version, those are the two loudest sounds you hear. And that makes sense because they're also my loudest patches. And on top of the high end, I have my lead. So if you notice, only the lead, the high end of uh, my frequencies, that is a monophonic synth. And the reason why is that when I do uh, some sort of layering with chord synths, I like to have my lead note be loudest. And it also kind of separates it from everything else. For example, think about a string quartet or think about an ensemble. The violin needs to come out the loudest of any other instrument. So the violin players need to project more and the other players need to pull back a little bit. So when I combine them together, That lead just gives it a little bit more punch in that sound, and it really feels like a full sound at that point. So we're not done just yet, because on top of all that, I also like to incorporate this concept that I'd like to think about. Um, and this concept essentially boils down to this, that all sound should be moving. Nothing should really feel periodic. Periodic meaning that the same waveform keeps repeating over and over again. And that's not a hard, fast rule. There are obviously sounds that can sound great if you repeat them over and over again in the waveform. But for me, generally, I like to make my sounds feel like they're always changing over time. So with that in mind, I'll show you some texture sounds that I think accomplish that. So here I added some, uh, well, uh, sorry, one sixth. Here I added some tremolo strings.
again, they're doing a, uh, that articulation because I wanted some movement over that sound. If I did some straight legato string tr uh, s string sample, it wouldn't really have that kind of complex detuned sound that I want to get out of it. Um, in addition, in the bass line, I also added this robotic kind of wobble sound. <laughs> And you can definitely tell that when I combine that with my other basses. It just makes that bass sound so much more full, so much more interesting too. So, and the last thing I haven't really talked about, which is kind of a bonus effect, is I added some movement uh, harmonically. So combine that all together, I found that you can create this really powerful, full sound. Naturally, when you do layering, you're going to want to do some kind of processing at the very end or in your group track. So I have a little bit of compression, I have some multiband compression to control it. Such as fattener just for texture, uh, EQing, multibanding again. That's all subjective, and you're going to have to figure that out as you layer your own sounds. But I hope that this really quick tutorial kind of reinforced that when you layer, think about, think about all your frequencies, generally your lows, your mids, and your highs, and create an individual sound or different subset of sounds for those frequencies. In addition, you also want to think about textures that generally uh, change over time. That way it makes it sound more interesting, the sound doesn't get stale, it's just a really nice way to make the sound dynamic. So that's about it. I hope that this is really useful and thanks for watching. Oh!